<laughs> oh, hey, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's really just for the comics now, so, uh, I'm sorry, we got, like, okay, <laughs> you, no, you can't, you can't come in, okay. Hey, hey, come here. There's a bunch of comedians hanging out with some friends. You're not supposed to be here, but if you're cool, you can come and hang. If you've ever been offended by anything, don't come in. It's after Armageddon, we're, we're fucked. <laughs> as long as you just you don't look at too much on the internet and you don't watch the news, you're yeah. usually in total bliss. That's so. why I say the best thing to do is just watch animal porn on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> were you not hopeful that there would be change with Obama in office? That, we love magic, man. We don't like talking reality. That's why I never really fell for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We like ma That's why people think ancient dishwashers have predicted the end of the world in 2012, man. I don't believe in that. <laughs> ancient dishwashers. The apocalypto goofy little short dude. I don't, I don't believe in it. <laughs> you feel this, though? You feel this. It's just like, ooh, because I said ancient dishwashers. But let's be honest, that's some funny shit. But it... it <laughs> But Myers. predicted the end of the world. Where Bob, you got a fucking joke about something about the end of the world, nigga? Um, jump in, Roseanne. <laughs> I don't know. I hate hope. <laughs> hope is fucking bullshit. And really, I think anything that takes you out of reality or like fucking dealing with reality is just bullshit, and therefore a reason. And if there's anybody who knows, it's you. What, reality? <laughs> I have my own reality. It's like stark. I, I don't <laughs> really search for a lot of meaning or fucking whatever. That's a statement at the, the loss of hope for people. It ain't no loss of hope for society. Look, the politicians do what they're supposed to do. But let me tell you, when you take a job as a person, and you have to tell me, OK, it's my job. I'm going to give you a fake parking ticket. I'm going to bash you in your head because you I'm told what? to do that. No matter how much it's your job, you're a part of the wheeze, and we all going to get fucked up anyway. So I got into a little trouble <laughs> at the airport because, you know, I have a whole issue with the uh, TSA and all that bullshit security, which is a fucking puppet show, let's be honest. It's, it's a, total, a joke. It's a total fraud. Well, I, um... I, I've spent a little time in some small windowless rooms because I don't, I don't want to be complacent because complacency is the problem. You know, people just go, oh, well, that's the way it is, and well, that will be the way it is. So, but, but then, you know, I got to make a flight because every year or two I have a gig. So <laughs> I, I just was hot under the collar one day. I was traveling a lot. And, they, you know, they started with the bullshit, and I got a little hissy fit, and the guy goes, hey, I'm just doing my job. And I said, oh, yeah, where's the last time I heard that? Oh, yes, Nuremberg. And boom, right into the little room. You know, but I'm always afraid they'll go up my butt. Like, you know, when they take you, and I, I was like... Where do you fly? No, the guy... They put me in the little room, and the guy started putting on rubber gloves. I'm like, D you can't go in my butt. You can't go in my butt. That's, I'm terrified, because who knows what the fuck people are going to do now. Here's my problem with that whole thing. A fat black bitch that is at the motherfucking gate, right? I mean, Patrice, she's can awful. you name, uh, just say her name. It, it has to be Tamika. Yeah. And don't, and don't try to set me up to do your white humor yeah, I for you, nigga. I, I, I feel you, Bob. I want to Here's the problem. Her. I'm gonna call her right the, now. The, our first defense is someone trying to get home at 5 o'clock to see Maury <laughs> versus somebody who lives, breathes, and eats killing me. And I don't trust them to make my life safe because they're, they're reactive. They're not thinking of things. I think of things all the time on how do I blow up the airport if I'm a terrorist? I still don't understand what the problem is with having people looking inside your ass. I don't understand. <laughs> what is... I mean, I put Altoids in there, you know? I, I, uh, I trick or treat that way. I mean, I... <laughs> I just know one thing. I'm, when I go through the line, I pick Tamika. Because Tamika loves my white ass because I was on Roseanne. <laughs> Ooh, isn't that funny? White girl from Roseanne! Come on through! <laughs> I, this is the way it's going to be. I'm 
working with Did it. Did you ever think that when we were young, you know, back when we were alive, that we would like be going, <laughs> uh, we would be going to the fucking I'm airport, excited. see the army guys with like guns and excited. badges and shit like this fucking Nazi Germany. Did you ever think it was gonna be like that? Well, of course I didn't. Did, are, you, are you telling me? Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't think that. Hey, Bob, Bob, uh, say something <laughs> attached to what the fuck they just said. <laughs> All right. Okay. What can come out your ass after that? Let's figure it out. <laughs> Some chewing gum, nigga. What, what's coming out your ass, bud? You're throwing this. Will you fucking? You, I have never. First thing, I have never had the N word thrown at me more. Really? Ever. I like saying nigga. I, I, I want to use so it. Do I. Exactly. So it's not. And this is this is the thing. I love the motherfucking word, right? And not because I love to say call anybody a nigga. I call white women nigga. It just I like that word. I, I, Why do you like that word? Can I ask? Because. Black people ain't getting no money for slavery. We ain't, got, we ain't gonna get reparations. What we did have is language. We got to say anything we want, the way we want, which is the reparations, which is the fact that I can say cracker all day, and everybody goes, uh -huh, uh -huh. but <laughs> because that was my payoff. As a black man, I get to say what the fuck I want to white people anytime I want. So are we fucking even yet or what? <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I have to say, it's still dangerous to have any kind of opinion that isn't a right-wing opinion. It's still danger Danger dangerous. Absolutely. I, I know one thing for sure. When I was, you know, 16 years old, and people talked about abortion, and women talked about abortion, it was like, you know, a prideful conversation. It was a conversation about the, sur the survival mm -hmm. of what a woman's future was. And now, I wouldn't fucking start talking about abortion in a, you know. I, I may talk about it here, because I know you'll cut the shit out. Oh, no, I ain't. I, this show is all about but, you, you know, talking I about mean, abortion. It's like the, it's the, <laughs> the fact, As a matter of fact, fact, a little later on, we're going to give you one. <laughs> And I enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> and my boyfriend was Catholic, so you put that in your fucking pipe and smoke it. It was a long fucking time ago. Maybe it's just that it's. But I wake up every women. day and I think about how old that baby would be right there. That's how I feel. That's a good point. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. That's an interesting thing you're about to say. I think that maybe it's for women that uh, it's dangerous to have anything but a right wing opinion. I think it goes like this. Uh -huh. Black women can say anything they want. <laughs> <laughs> White women can say 95% of things they want. Black guys can say the next level of things they want. And straight white dudes can't say nothing. <laughs> I want to ask Rosie about this. Oh. Speaking of uh, women taking risks. Yeah, I got in a little bit of trouble for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny, but like, <laughs> you I'll are tell so you. out there, Rosie. I'll tell you. And she looks like Hitler in the picture. <laughs> I actually, I don't, don't I look like just Hitler? Like Hitler, like you have his Thank face. you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Check out my fucking Hitler shit. It's uh, it's Hitler. These are little gingerbread Jews, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. It's like a Jewish woman, and she's dressed up like Hitler, and um, you know, he's in drag, Hitler. <laughs> And he's baking cookies, and he's really proud of them, but also he's looking off into the horizon because he has a dream. <laughs> <laughs> it was for Heap magazine. It was their Germany issue. And who, who better a symbol of Germany than Hitler? <laughs> And now, what did your detractors have to say about oh this? Oh, my God, you don't want to piss off Jews. Even if you're a Jew, don't piss off Jews. <laughs> Nobody piss, pisses off Jews worse than Jews. Yeah, all Jews hate each so other. That's Jews true. went crazy over this, understandably. Yeah, and they, I don't see understandably. I'm like, I'm, it really pissed me off because they're like, you're making fun of the, the people in the ovens. Well, I'm not making fun of the people You kind of are, though. I kind of am not. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. Only that. thing would have been worse if you made the cookie skinny. <laughs> wow. No, that's so not right. Can I finish yes, up? Yes, yes, please, okay. please. Also, there's another deeper layer to it. 
you know, just the everyday. I mean, moving off of this Holocaust, there's been about 50 of them since then. That's what I'm kind of trying to say is like, Jesus Christ, it's so fucking everyday now, Holocaust. It's like baking cookies. Well, and, and well, it, well, you know, it oh, really shit. is. Yeah. It really is. Oh, yeah. so, yeah. That's beautiful. Were you not aware when you were doing this that that's not what people would be thinking? That this, this, this... Roseanne has enough faith I don't give a humanity. fuck what people think. Well, that's it. That... I care what people do. I don't care what they think. That's what I'm trying to say is let's stop the Holocaust. L l like when, when I did sing the Star Spangled Banner, hey, let's care about freedom instead of symbols of freedom for a fucking change. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't so, know. Um, what, what, um, I'm just really old. When you're postmenopausal, man, you're, you're kind of crazy. <laughs> You've been postmenopausal for a long fucking time. <laughs> yeah. You know what's particularly tragic is that you can't be nuanced anymore. That, that you can't is really be point. layered or ironic. Right. That you have to serve it up absolutely blatant. Yeah. Otherwise, people won't get it. And that's what's most disturbing about our culture. That's that. really true. Most of that, in terms of art and, and, and comedy, actually is coming from the left. I agree. So I totally fucking agree. That's Explain it. Long. Explain yeah. some. It, because the political correctness thing took over. Right. And now, and now political correctness, which is a well-intended, meaningful effort to include and to, and to not just casually accept things that we had casually accepted for generations, has been bastardized into some Orwellian sort of... It's just to shut people up. I mean, the left loves to censor people and shut them up. The left and the right, they're the same fucking thing. Yeah, I mean, well, exactly, it was, exactly. It was like years ago <laughs> when I first started performing and all these like lesbian feminists in Seattle like surrounded me like I, was, I thought they were gonna like scalp me. Fuck, that's hot. Because I was wearing... Because <laughs> I was wearing, a, yeah, I was wearing a fucking skirt and they said, do you know what you're doing to the feminist movement? Yeah. I said, yeah, hopefully feminizing it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask, can I ask uh, Roseanne and Sandra if it's better now to be a woman doing comedy than it was when you started? It's easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's, I think it's easier for everybody to do comedy now because it's just... Right. Really? It's, right. Yeah, because once again, we're back to just at the common denominator of total stupidity. Because right. nobody wants to do the work, but you know, anybody can just get up now and fucking Thank you. do the shit on a reality yeah, show. And they're true. fucking applauded like they've, they've been out there doing this shit for 30 years. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's speed. anybody sitting here who didn't, you know, at five years old know that this is what they were gonna do. I One mean, of the nice things that Richard Pryor said to me, which affected me a lot, was uh, how old were you when uh, you knew you were funny? And I said, I, I was four. And he said, yeah, I mean, he said it at the same time yeah. that I said it. He said, yeah, but four. You're born to do it. You don't have any choice. I remember seeing Richard Pryor when I was a kid on Ed Sullivan. When I saw him, it was like, I just got it. I got that he was inside the stereotype. Right. I got that he was right, right inside it and, and pushing out. People ask me who my favorite comedians are, is Richard Pryor and George Carlin. And I didn't look at them and go, I could do. That's what I could do. Right. I looked at them and said, I, I want to, I'm funny, but I can't do that. Well, you know what? Now they, people watch comedy and go, shit. They also inspired <laughs> I can do, do that, that shit. <laughs> I was hilarious to start doing comedy, man. <laughs> I hear that. Comedy took all that. my funny that. away, man. Let me ask you this. Is it the commerce that did it to you? It's the fact that I had to pay a bill and the fact that when I first started, I used to care about whether this guy laughed, this guy, this woman. But then as I got my first uh, compliment on my first paycheck or whatever, it, I started to use people. You're talking about in a business thing. sense? Like, or? if I think somebody is in here that could do something for my career, I'm using these people to show you how funny I am to get what I want as opposed to really loving them. But right. I'm, I'm trying to love the people again. That's what made me start comedy. So at what point did you realize that that had happened to you and you decided to When I got stop suicidal... <laughs> <laughs> When I was sitting there broke, this is back when Burger King first came out with 99 cent sandwiches, <laughs> and I had two of them on my stomach, one in my hand, and if I had a gun, because I came from the first time I ever did the Aspen Comedy Festival, I killed so hard, I was scared I was gonna be famous and shit. And then it didn't happen like I wanted it to happen, and I got disappointed, and I said, fuck it, let me just, I'm gonna just do what I do, which is why motherfuckers don't know me from a goddamn ho You heard the claps. Roseanne, whoa! Wow! Wow!
we should be wooing. <laughs> well, what about your material, man? You about feeling it? good about that? Yeah. Uh -huh. I love that. I love being able to say anything I want. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to stop caring about people not yeah. laughing. Because the, the idea of comedy, really, is not everybody should be laughing. Right. It should be about 50 people laughing and 50 people horrified. Right. Was, <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be people that get it and people yeah. that don't get it. People, for some reason, the people who don't get it have a lot more energy <laughs> to say you suck harder than the oh, yeah. people who love and you. And we only hear the one person that looks at us with hatred. But they usually also get up in the middle of your show and say, fuck you, and walk out. I've had that. I heard and that I, I you actually did fucked that someone. In the, uh, uh, I heard that Sandra... <laughs> one of my favorite stories is like Sandra, I heard in the Catskills, that uh, you were on stage and it was all old Jewish people. Well, no, they, and, told, they told me it was the singles weekend at the Concord. <laughs> <laughs> when I went in later, they, they, it was like the story they tell everybody because it's so legendary. And some <laughs> old guy, he's about 80, he says, uh, say something nice, Sarah. He thought she was fucking Sarah Bernhardt. <laughs> and, uh, and she looked at him and you said, eat my pussy. <laughs> I did? Yeah. She went, oh my goodness. <laughs> I blocked that one out. Patrice, you have to stop worrying about your career, is what you, because you always I've say. I've stopped worrying about it. It's done. Mini me. No. <laughs> Vern I'm Troyer. 40 with high blood pressure and diabetes. I'm finished. I'm the oldest dude doing this show, <laughs> man. You're, not, you're fine. Vern Troyer is going to do another movie, Mini Me. If he can get shot out of a cannon into a vagina, you're going to work the rest of your life. <laughs> Funny shit about Bob. He leaves in like this shit's poignant. <laughs> Let me tell you something about vagina, son. Bob, 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 just finger something already. <laughs> uh, somebody told me something once that I think about all the time, even though I did get filthy rich. Um, <laughs> from comedy. But this person said, um, it, sometimes you get a choice between being successful and being great. Yeah. I, it, with all due respect, as a friend, my suggestion, I have three daughters. Uh, you want you trying to fix them up? No, I'm suggesting. <laughs> wow, man, you really are cool. <laughs> I knew this was going to go there. <laughs> what I'm telling you is you got to get outside yourself. Everybody has to get out of the narcissistic, and I'm a right, big narcissist. Right. What I'm suggesting to you is have a child. First thing, it's, <laughs> it's seven true. minutes. But a child will give you a projection you mean, outside seven of minutes? you. Seven minutes of material, immediately. Oh, okay. But, but... <laughs> it's right. panel. It's... it's... <laughs> what, you, what, what you need to do, though, is get outside yourself. They do bring Congratulations, you... They Mr. give you... It. It's they a type 20. <laughs> Don't say, don't say tight about my child. But, but I'm saying if you get out of yourself and not make it about you and have a, a, a kid is a thing that does give you hope. Bob, I, have, I, have I, noble, I understand what you're saying, but it also uh, makes people. you go when they go, Patrice, you want to do Celebrity Fit Club? If I have a kid, I go, yes. If I don't have a kid, I go, nah. Yeah. By Celebrity Fit Club, <laughs> Patrice means full house. <laughs> Okay, I, I did the show. Hello, <laughs> my name is Bob. I did Full House. Hi, Bob. And it's okay, just, no kids. It's, it's, wait, it's, Bob, you have no children. Do you do Full House and do you do America's Funniest Home Videos if you, you didn't have any answer? kids? And I'm not disrespecting, but want, I'm asking you that. Do you want the answer? Yes. Uh, the, the first thing I did, it took me eight years of hosting at the Comedy Store and the improv in town and working clubs and trying to get a job. And then uh, the first thing I got was a Richard Pryor movie, Critical Condition. I went and did that and then never thought I'd work again. I did just have a baby and I wanted to be on a sitcom forever. And the producers of it saw me in the Richard Pryor movie, Critical Condition, and that's why they hired me. So I wanted to be on a sitcom. So the answer is, would I do it over again? This is the path. You go through the doors that open. And uh, if enough. a door doesn't Fair open, enough. you can't push on it because you're fucked. Yeah. So, you know, I would uh, play the gay father of three again. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Not were now. you gay on that show? You weren't gay on that show, were you? No, I lived with two men in San Francisco. I was not gay. I don't judge people in Hollywood that do anything, because you just don't know, man. If Steven Spielberg says, hey, you're going to be in Jaws 12. If you get a call from Steven Spielberg and he says you're in Jaws 12, you're going to be chum. <laughs> 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 Fuck you. You don't want it. Do not take, do not take it. <laughs>
Don't take that. It'll be the same call that Roseanne gets from Steven Spielberg when he says he loved that picture of you as the Nazi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Next, Shavuos. Did you get... <laughs> <laughs> did you get it? Did you get like professional trouble from that photo? Oh, I always get in professional trouble. <laughs> oh yeah. You know what? I do what I want to do. I'm so lucky. I do it when I want to do it, and I do it the way I want to do it. I don't kiss nobody's ass because I'm a comic. I have to spit in their eyes. So when I get up there, I mean, they don't never invite me back again. But fuck, that's how it is. When you say that, though, what, what does that mean to you? Like I got to meet the mayor of Jerusalem. And um, I was starting shaking, you know, and I knew I was going to do it. And, you know, part of me, too, is like, you're going to get in a lot of fucking trouble. Keep your fucking big mouth shut. Because I have that. We all have that, right? Just don't fucking up. do just it. Just shut your please, mouth. Please, but for once up. in your fucking life, just go please. in there and be gracious. Oh. Like, fucking just be nice and <laughs> gracious. Keep you. your fucking mouth shut. <laughs> oh, my but God. But then I was like, I know I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I just could, I couldn't because I'm a comic. But you still pulled off icon, though. Well, I want to say what I said to him because I'm so proud of myself. Right. He was overlooking the dome of the rock and the mountain, the whole thing we're all... The whole fucking thing's about a piece of real estate that big. That's why there's hundreds of wars for millions of years. Yeah. And um, I said, how come we can't share that with uh, Arabs and stuff? <laughs> oh, shit. And he said, he goes, well, that's what we're supposed to do after the Messiah comes. I go, he's, he's not going to come till we do do it, don't you think? <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it was cool, because then I was like, and I was all shaking and sweating and stuff. And uh, I mean, I shake now when I think about it, and my knees were shaking. But I was like, that's what, you, that's what you're supposed to do, I guess. You went crazy on, uh, <laughs> on Fox News. I have several times. On your blog, especially. Your yeah. award-winning blog. Yeah. Which, what was the award it won? Uh, I can't remember. It was the most <laughs> incoherent blog ever. Is that right? Yeah. Really, it I won just... most incoherent blog? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. That. No, yeah. that's an honor from AOL. She was also voted best Nazi chef on the Food Channel. <laughs> <laughs> what an interesting little tidbit. I was on Fox News promoting something last year, and Ann Coulter literally ran into my arms and told me how much she loved me. And I was like, this is wow. so... Oh, yeah. We made heard. out. It was... <laughs> My friend Lee Camp is here. Say hello to Lee Camp. Lee Camp is a terrific, terrific comedian. Really funny guy. I'm going to run this clip. I, you'll appreciate this. Oh, cool. Lee, set, just set it up before I play it, will you? They invited me on to tell jokes, and uh, I did what you did, Roseanne. I was like, fuck telling jokes. So well, this is what you, I did. You got to see this. This, this is when I oh, fell Oh, you were on Fox? Yeah. Not only watch the clip that Lee is on, but then pay attention to what happens after it, okay. just to show you the journalism would okay. disgust you. Yeah, I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot more jokes for the rest of the campaign here. Oh, they just keep going. What? Can I, can I just ask a question? Yeah, sure. What, what is Fox News? It's just a parade of propaganda, isn't it? It's just a, it's just a festival of ignorance. What, why, a million people are dead in Iraq. Come on, this is ridiculous. What's the point of this? Um, this is insane. Well, I love, uh, go out, I love people Fox at home, News. go outside. Go, go hug Lee, your children. you should be more... Well, Fox News is going to be worried. Love your family, you know? And you, you get all the news right. at Fox News. You can get running. all the news you can and at Fox why? News. All right, thank and you. And I think... Oh, okay. All right, that's it. All right. We're also talking about Captain Kirk this morning. And... <laughs> <laughs> How much do we love you, Kev? What happened after? Uh, to, uh, go over some of my hate mail real quick, because oh, it's great. These people are geniuses. They really are. <laughs> Fuck you for what you said, you commie. You can suck my ball sack and get a haircut, you fag. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, my I'm mother accused. had not been in her right mind. I'm, <laughs> I'm accused of being a fag, but he's asked me to suck his ball sack. So. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> this one said, at least Hitler didn't sit on his hands. He got to killing his enemies, as America should. Starting with traitors like you, you coward bastard. All you want to do is talk your bull, asterisks, 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 asterisks. <laughs> So, 
using Hitler, he's gonna murder me, but he self-censored the word shit. <laughs> it's also an odd way to compliment Hitler. He didn't say Hitler's a good man. He just said he didn't sit on his hands. So it's, it's like, you can call him a mass murderer all you want, but I will not sit here while you call him lethargic. <laughs> we can't, huh? Hey, guys, this has been phenomenal. Thanks for what being here. What a great here. show you've got. Thank yeah. you. This is your show, by the way, which I think is exciting <laughs> yeah, for, it is for all exciting. of us. It's exciting. It's exciting. Stroke the shaft. I'm going to tell you, I'm happy about that, too. Wait, wait a second. I'm wait. happy about that, too, because Provenza got nigga luck, and if he get a show on TV, I know I could get one on television. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming and playing, man. Roseanne Ball, Patrice O'Neill, Sandra Bernhardt, Bob Saget. Ah, <laughs> oh, you guys are shoving me out. Come and hang out with us again, right? Thank you so much. Thank you. See what I was trying to tell you? Yeah. It's so amazing. Yeah. 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 Chicken.